Hi everyone, this is Kara from Angry Centaur Gaming, and today I'm happy to bring you Operation Gonad Thunder, or as the Serbians like to call it, the 360 review for Call of Duty Ghost. It's also on next-gen systems, but since those haven't been released yet, we're going to have to satisfy ourselves with a review of the current-gen versions. Hang on to your butts, it's time to put up or shut up. Call of Duty Ghost tells the epic tale of a special mission force created by Patrick Swayze and Whoopi Goldberg and their afterlife mission to create an oyster farm in the East Indies. Ah, who am I kidding? It's about some dudes who are pissed, so pissed that they kill some other dudes who in fact are so scared of them that they call the first group ghosts. Hence the name, because they're scary. Think I'm kidding? Nope, the game even starts out with a man telling stories. So get your rucks, check your megs, and dust off your BDUs. It's time to slag some baddies. First up, graphics. There's been a great deal discussed about the resolutions of the next-gen versions of Ghost, but this is a review of the 360 version, and so we can ignore that and jump straight into the non-pixel counting land. Hmm. Imagine giving your three-year-old some blush and mascara and throwing them into a room with 40 store mannequins, and for the most part, you just describe the assortment of blank-faced drones shimming their way through the Call of Duty game. Then, occasionally, someone shows up thrusting their face directly into your line of vision, sup man, in a cutscene, and looks somewhat lifelike, but only if your version of lifelike is a low polygon skull with skin that looks like it was ironed on by a parent trying to put a Boy Scout patch on, just pressing as hard as possible until every crease is removed and all detail is just muted. But that's okay, because in actuality, the world itself is pretty cool looking if you don't look too close, with high FPS throughout, and as the Call of Duty games have always been known for, there's a severe amount of giant exploding, tipping on fire set pieces, sometimes all three at the same time. Never thought another game like this could turn it up past Call of Duty 2 Modern Warfare? Wrong. One slightly sad thing is, just like Star Wars, the developers decided to have a sand planet, an ice planet, and a forest planet, and they damn near follow that order. Even space is retreaded ground. Though you do get to battle some bitches in Zero-G, which is a little nauseating, and is pretty much like fighting bitches in 1G, but in space. Aliasing rears its ugly head in a variety of places, but isn't noticeable to the point of distraction, while special effects abound from fire, explosions, smoke, debris, bodies being thrown into the air, and all manner of distractions to keep players mostly interested. Underwater areas are actually pretty goddamn cool, with some of the set pieces showing off a bit more prowess than previous games. Overall, the graphics are more current gen than next, with the FPS in the solid 60s, which is expected for this kind of game. I wouldn't say the graphics are bad, but they're held down by the soulless husks of NPCs gone wrong, and brought up by some excellent animation, especially during the water and space missions, with dudes hiding behind rocks and debris using fairly context-sensitive animations. The one thing I'd really point out is the game is fairly schizophrenic when it comes to texturing, going from fairly poor to uniformly excellent, depending on the level and what you're doing. Sound, music, and voice. What can I say? Sound first. Guns and explosions have never been a weak point with the COD style games, and as expected, when the shit hits the fan, it sounds like you are there. The mixing is fairly well done, and the 3D effects really add to the immersion. If everything wasn't sampled from the real world counterparts, I would be surprised. Except for the death screams and stabbing sounds, but I can only assume no one wanted to go to jail for actually killing someone. Then again, developers are a focused bunch. Music. Bombastic, over-the-top Americana. About every three minutes, another large, in-charge score begins to creep up out of your speakers on the wings of bald eagles crying to the tune of Freebird. The score is great for a game like this, and for a Michael Bay movie. But subtle, it is not. In fact, it's about as subtle as a baseball bat to the nuts. After a giant man warns you, he's going to hit you in the nuts with a baseball bat. Over the top of over the top. Stallone would be proud. Voice. Here I was actually very happy. The voiceovers were great and I love the different characters, though you do hear the occasional guy slip out of his accent just a bit or go monotone for a moment. The voice acting was great, if a bit cheesy. Not world please cheesy, more like the better 1980s action movies of the past. Less Oscar winning and more Oscar de la Hoya. Good without the cross-dressing. Gameplay, the meat and potato. The single player campaign is six to seven hours of over the top Bay action, minus Shia LaBeouf and Michael's penchant for spinning camera shots. I mean, you're rampaging through the world like a tapeworm-ridden lion in the local deli department, just fucking everyone's shit up. At times, you control the dog, and these guys actually did a good job not making the levels overstay their welcome. Tear some necks out and move on. Does the dog die? I am not saying. The plot itself is a mixed bunch, one part corn nuts, one part corn flakes. There's a crunchy and entertaining tale of betrayal that turns out to be effectively more noise than taste, which is a bit sad, actually. Honestly, it's not as bad as many action games out there, but it's also not as good as many of them. What bothers me is there's an actual interesting story here, but it's an artistic mismatch that serves very little to push the narrative forward. In fact, a couple times I was wondering if the villain knew something I didn't know, because this is one pissed off dude. His levels of overreaction reach nuclear meltdown at the starting of the game, and I just go up from there and I can't help but question his loyalty to being a villain, which to me equaled, you failed your driving test so I'm gonna nuke your hometown. But the story does push the gameplay forward, and the game is still gun porn through and through, with weapon models dropping from dead bodies like Plinko machines, and if you're like me, you're trying each 
new one out more often than reloading. In fact, many times it took less time to reload than to just pick up a new weapon and go to town. Not that that's a bad thing. At times, it easily comes close to Borderlands 2 and the amount of weapons just streaming out of the bad guys like their innards were constructed at Winchester. I'm sure you're all as surprised as I am that Jack and the Box tacos are pretty fucking great. And I was just about that surprised when I found out that the AI isn't too shabby here. It didn't run around and just wait to be shot, and it wasn't sitting around like a Kardashian waiting for somebody to take their picture. Instead, they did their duty, offering some challenge and some teamwork. Multiplayer Bomba Baby. This thing is fucking stacked. And yes, the four-player split screen has been assassinated and replaced with two-player local split screen, which sucks donkey balls like it's being paid for each pound of pressure. But man up and take your sauce and let's see what we got because it is a lot. Aside from the typical multiplayer, you also have Extinction, which is a replacement for the Zombies game in, in, in the previous games. And for all intents and purposes, it's better on all fronts with an assortment of traps and tricks you can play on the enemies. The levels are a mix of tight funnels and open areas like a 3D version of chutes and ladders. It is really great. Strategies come both organically and by design as I found myself and others sort of holding off ever-growing incursions of enemies, sphincters tightening with each wave. It was really great fun. Then there's also squads, which allows you to put together squads. The cool thing is that the multiplayer allows for bots in most of the areas, which means that for those of you who want to practice a level, you can dive right in. Good fun with a huge number of levels and their size, it will be some time before strategies really begin to develop. Does the multiplayer change anything dramatically? Nope. But the number of levels in the various modes means that if that's your thing, it's a game unto itself, and I see nothing that indicates it isn't as impressive as past endeavors. So what do you get with Call of Duty Ghosts? You get a one-pass single player with an in-depth multiplayer game that does nothing seemingly wrong, takes a bit of what you loved out, namely split-screen four-player, which is big to troops in some dorms, and it adds a good number of modes and levels. So I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or use the DVD as a dog toy for Riley rating scale. This is a buy. It's good. As someone who isn't a huge Call of Duty fan, there was enough here in the single player for me to feel like I almost got my money's worth, but add in the multiplayer, and you're talking some serious man hours of blood and guts. This is a game with a single track mind to offer you fast action doggy style and never leave you without something to shoot or be shot by. I enjoyed it, I continue to enjoy it, and I don't see anything that will stop me from playing it for a good deal longer. Thanks for listening to the review. If you liked it, hit like. If you disliked it, hit dislike. And always remember the motto of the ghosts. Riley, sick balls. This is Carrick from Angry Centaur Gaming, broadcasting from somewhere behind enemy lines. Peace out, bitches. Oh, you are dead. I'm going to get you back for those fucking poisonous dog toys. Come here. Surprise!